Well, Paulo, first off, uh, congratulations. Um, not everybody gets this opportunity to coach in Major League Soccer. I'm sure you're fully aware. It's a lot of USL coaches that probably were interviewed, wanted the job. What does this moment mean to you personally from a coaching perspective? It means a lot. It means a, means a magnificent opportunity, right? It's, uh, it, I understand the responsibility. I understand the size of this club. But I also believe in myself. I believe in my abilities, and I really, I really believe that we can turn this, this thing around because uh, it's it's been, it's been some uh, difficult years for the for the Houston Dynamo FC fans in the last few years. So hopefully we can we can give them we can give them some joy in the near future. Speaking to the new coach of the uh, Houston Dynamo, Paulo Nagamura was an outstanding midfielder. You remember him from his days. Uh, with the LA Galaxy, with Chivas USA, and with Sporting Kansas City, uh, two MLS Cups uh, he has won as a player, and two uh, Lamar Hunt US Open Cups, I think, if, if I'm correct. Um, the opportunity has come for you, um, and you've mentioned Peter Vermees and Sporting Kansas City and that influence. I get that part of it. Everybody has influences. What's the Paulo Nagamura influence? How do you take what you've learned from Vermees and all your coaching experiences. And then what's the, what's the secret recipe with the Paulo side of it? I think you're right. I have a big influence because I've been uh, playing and working uh, for the last 10 years under Peter. Right. But uh, I was born in Brazil. I played in Brazil. Uh, I have definitely, I have that influence as well on the, on that side of, of, of my coaching. And I also played in England uh, three years. So I have that experience as well that I think mixing up together, I think it's, it's, a, good, it's a good formula, right? I, I, I like the game, how the game is played in a certain ways in England. I like the game, how it's played in certain ways in Brazil. And I have my knowledge of playing and coaching under uh, one, one of the most uh, successful organization in the past few years here in MLS. So I think that makes, that's what's going to make maybe what you call the Paulo Nagamura formula. Paulo, um, thanks uh, for that. And you're pretty humble because the two teams you were talking about, you played at as a youth for my listeners, Sao Paulo in Brazil and Arsenal in England, huge clubs. How vivid are the memories? Because you were a youth player then. How vivid can you remember things or, or, do you remember a specific thing a coach said to you that made a big difference? Very vivid more memories. And uh, I was just talking early uh, this afternoon that when I got transferred from Sao Paulo to Arsenal, uh, you one day you're watching Thierry Henry and Dennis Bergkamp and Patrick Riera uh, watching uh, them play on a World Cup or on a TV. And the next day you are actually training with those guys. So those memories for sure are memories that is going to be on the back of my head for a long time. And that's, that's some uh, great experiences that I, I can definitely carry on through my coaching and through my entire life. All right, let's take a, a quick glance from your perspective. How much time have you been able to see the Dynamo play? How much tape have you watched? Obviously, you watched some of their games last year the current roster you have? How about just some observations from you on it? Well, I, to be honest, I watched probably over 75% of the games that Houston Dynamo played last year. Uh, it's, it's difficult for me to judge or to say uh, what, what, what they're doing or what they're trying to do or how, because it, it's, it's in, my, in my opinion, it's a little bit unethical because I don't know what Tab was doing, right? But for, from my point of view, one thing that, that, that really, really uh, stand out was uh, it was the competitiveness. It was the organization. It was, uh, uh, it was uh, the, the mentality uh, of the players and the team on the playing field. I, I, remember, I remember very vivid, like you said, the days that I came here to, to, this, to the Houston Dynamo Stadium. And it was really, really difficult to get a result. It was really, really difficult to um, to even get a tie. So I think, I think, in my opinion, uh, unfortunately, the Houston Dynamo got away from that in a in a in a couple of ways, and that's what 
uh, me as a coach, I'm going to try to implement is to make this stage and our fortress and be always on the front foot and make it really, really difficult for other teams. Okay, you're alluding to that San Jose team that was relocated here, right? And, and you know, uh, the, you know, the Eddie Robinsons, the Pat Onstads, the Brian Mullins, uh, you know, all these guys had an incredible work ethic. That was a 12 team league. That was a different time. But that's a part of soccer that never goes away, right? The, the fight, the determination. But that's, that that's, alone isn't going to help you win an MLS. So you're telling me that last year, essentially, you thought this team does not have a strong enough backbone, and that's being respectful to everybody that was on it, obviously. I think it's part of the culture, right? This is, this is the culture of the locker room, the culture of the club. Uh, look, it, don't get me wrong. Uh, Brad Davis, great player. Pat Onster, great player. Brian Ching, great player. Rico Clark, great player. But they were great right? Because they have an unbelievable work ethic, an unbelievable commitment. They were team first. They were, they were, they were competitive, right? It's not that you just bring that part to the table. They, yes, they have qualities, but if they don't have that part of, on their game, I don't think they will be successful as they, they did in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in those years. So as you look at the roster in the future, and now that you're in place and we heard the general manager, Pat Onstad, say that, that, look, Paulo's here now. Now we can think about some of the players because he didn't want to make moves without you being here. The backbone and the character of the guy is going to be huge, right? Absolutely. I mean, look, we're going to have to instill our culture in the locker room. And uh, it's just it's just natural process, right? The, the guys that don't feed that culture, they're normally they're not going to fit in, right? And, and that's fine. That's fine. And we just got to move on. We got to have, we had, we have to build that strong culture in a locker room, in a club, and then make some pieces based on what we believe and who our value, what our values are. So it's just a process. It's, this is not going to happen overnight. This is not going to happen after preseason. This takes time, but uh, I think this is a, this is a great foundation to, to how to start a work in, in, in this franchise right now. He's the new Dynamo head coach, Paulo Nagamura, joining us. Uh, very excited uh, that he's coming to Houston. All right, you, you come from an organization that's cultural both on and off the field. In support of you and a head coach and a GM and a, and a technical director, you don't have the support of the organization and the passion coming from the front office side too. Um, that can be a problem. Um, it's got to be everybody, right? You had that in Kansas City. Can you take us into, you know, kind of that connection between the front office and the competitive side of the team? Definitely. Yeah, it's a combined work. It absolutely, it's a combined work. And like Pat used the word collaboration, right? It's, it, it's not just a, a technical side doing uh, and try to work on a culture. It, it, it comes in the front office. It comes all the way. It started from the ownership group, right? So that's, that's a good thing. We, we know that the things that we believe, and I think that's why it was a great match and the, the interview process was so natural and, and transparent is because we, 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 see, we see what we need to do here at Houston in the same way, right? We, we believe that that culture needs to be established. Uh, we need guys that are collaborate. We need guys that are t players that are team players first. So it, it's definitely, it's a combined work that it takes, like I say, it's a process, it's not overnight, but at least we know that once it's coming from the top, it's much easier to do it than it's just coming from the, 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 the first team staff. Paulo, in years past, and I say again, this is respectfully uh, to everybody that's come and gone, but in years past, sometimes the communication and the transparency from the coach, and the general manager have been very protected. They're not allowing the outside people in. And I understand there's certain things you can't talk about. But is that important to you from your position to be able to be transparent and communicative, not only to the press, but also to the media? Because that's the sense I got at the press conference uh, that you had yesterday. Yeah, absolutely. I think it, it, transparency, I don't want to sell myself here, but it's one of my... Uh, that's one of my things. I need to be able to talk to the media and say, look, this, this, is, what, this is not good. We need to get better at this. This is good. Uh, we need to fix this and that. 
right? Of course, you some some information is, is very sensitive, and we need to address that in a, in a every uh, proper way. But I, I believe transparency. If you want to have a, 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 a ownership group, a director, a, a global leadership, the technical stuff, front office, all going to the same direction, it has to have a connection between all of the departments. So as long as we are transparent and and having good communications, I don't think that's going to be a problem. Talking to Paulo Nagambura, uh, the new Dynamo head coach uh, at Onstad and him uh, yesterday in a press conference. And as we mentioned, uh, as a youth player, Paulo at Sao Paulo in Brazil and went to Arsenal and of course came to Major League Soccer, won two MLS Cups. Um, what have you learned coaching sport in Kansas City too? Uh, when it comes to, uh, I would go right into young players. What's, what's the most important thing dealing with young players and how much teaching do you think you're going to have to do now at this next level? Um, I think, yes, working with the young players, I think there's a lot of teaching. I think you have to be probably a little bit patient because you really work individually more than collectively uh, on the second team in an academy basis, right? It's more like individual de development than uh, results oriented, let's put it this way. Uh, so I think uh, with the first team here in Dynamo, I think, I think we're going to have to get things done so we get the result on Saturday night. So definitely uh, the communication uh, was a big part that I, I probably learned from my, my five years with working with the second team, the communication with the players, making sure that players understand what they're being asked to, uh, uh, what they what needs to be done, what they need to achieve. What I think just communication in general, I think it was a big, a big thing that I took from 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 that position that I had with Sporting Kansas City. Now, when you step into a head coaching role, and I can tell you, when I first went on TV, I hope the tape doesn't exist the very first time I ever came on TV because I hope it's hidden and buried somewhere because it was pretty funny, but. This is a different thing. You're, you're now going to be coaching hardened pros. you got a guy named Darwin Quintero on a roster that certainly provided challenges last year for Tab Ramos. Those two, this is natural in a soccer team. Is that going to be something you're going to have to learn a bit on the fly, or do you have enough experience working with the older players? I think I have, I do have enough experience to deal with older players. Look, at the end of the day, it's, it's a fresh start for all the players in our roster right now, right? They have the opportunity to show the new coach what what they do, what, what they're all about. And and we're gonna establish the, the, the standards. We're gonna establish the, the expectations. And again, it's, it's a process, right? Some players gonna get them weave, weave themselves out of it. Some players not gonna adapt. Some players gonna do well. So it's a process. It's not going to be an overnight thing. But yes, I, I, I expect that there are going to be players that are going to be uh, unhappy or uh, or whatever, not motivated, but it's, it's the process. If we want to build a process, we need to have players that fit that process and fit that culture that we were trying to implement. At what point do you want this roster to transition into being Paulo Nagamura's roster? Does that take a year? Does that take two years? I mean... Do we have any timelines from the owner and the organization? Because this is, uh, I can say from my position, just very humbly, this is not an easy thing to turn around. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it's not, it's not easy. But you know also that in this league, if you get a few pieces together and you become competitive, you can make the playoffs, right? So I'm not saying that uh, in one year we're going to have a championship team. But I, what I try to say is like, if we put some pieces together, have a competitive team, we, we can make the playoffs, right? With the work that we're gonna put in on a daily basis. So again, it's, it's a process. We, it, we're gonna have to assess the, the squad that we have right now on a daily basis. And, and hopefully we can, we can do that as soon as we, we can possibly can. And also the players to understand what we're trying to achieve as well, because if they don't understand, is, is going to be uh, more difficult. Paulo Nagamura, head coach of the Houston Dynamo, really appreciative that uh, he's coming on the radio. So the first time you step in that locker room, where do you set the bar? Um, is it playoffs? Is it, you know, how do you, how do you set that bar as a coach? I think it, you have to set up as a playoff team, 
that's 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 what you have to set up as a playoff team because and you've been around for all these years a, a team that makes the playoff as a last place as a first place it's everyone's game when we get to playoffs and i think as a as a as a team as a franchise i think it's fair for for not only the players the coaching staff the directors the owners and the fans especially okay that we that we that we have set the goal like that because it's they we we've been missing the playoffs for for so many years now and to be back in the playoffs i think it's if we if we can put those pieces together is an achievable goal paulo what are the th- positional needs for you is, is it a center forward is it a uh, uh, an attacking midfielder is it a holding midfielder where are the biggest positional needs for you in your mind when you look at the roster right now well yeah we need we need definitely need to add some pieces uh, for sure we we're gonna add hopefully in the near future uh, uh, a center forward a number nine hopefully we can add a couple of midfielders as well uh, but again uh, I I uh, this is a process we discuss internally uh, with Pat what's the best the best route to go. And uh, well, one thing that I can guarantee is that our team is going to add quality and hopefully that quality comes uh, before the, the, the season open on February, February 27th. Okay, so my brain was working when you got hired, which doesn't always work all the time, but it was working for a little while. And I'm thinking, all right, Paulo Nagamura, Brazil, Sao Paulo, under 22 initiative, will there be a look to go to Brazil and look for players with your contacts and the amount of people that you know down there? Yeah, absolutely. I, I have a lot of contacts in Brazil and I've been following uh, the Brazilian league since I joined MLS. Uh, it's something that I always keep track of it. And uh, I mean, it's a possibility, but so is a possibility if, to get players from South America, from Mexico, from everywhere in the world. We're just trying to uh, uh, narrow down what's the best option for us, for us right now. Speaking of Mexico, you spent some time at Tigris. We're a city full of uh, Tigris and Rayados fans. Um, tell us a little bit about your time uh, at Tigris and kind of what it meant to you to play in Liga MX and at a club uh, that story. Well, it's, it, Tigres is a massive club in, in Monterrey, and I, uh, it was. But the time, the time that I spent there was a difficult time. It was a, it was a, it was a period that the team was fighting relegation, so um, the fans were really, really, really uh, not happy with, with the team, and we didn't have a very good, very good year. But in terms of an experience, unbelievable atmosphere, unbelievable fan base. Um, uh, and great as well to experience that Mexican league, the, the level of play of the Mexican league as well. What about the pressure, the off-field pressure when you're not doing well in Mexico? It's a little bit different than MLS, right? Very different. And that's, that's one of the things that definitely I take from, from that experience is, is that if after we lose a game, you could, you could barely go and, and have a dinner out with your family. I mean, the fans were... Uh, knocking on your car, asking why you lost the game, and the it was pressure. There was pressure, and I think that helped me uh, throughout the years having that experience because not only uh, you you see the you try you try to see the game from their their eyes as well because there's so many passionate fans out there that they 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 want their team to do well, and I think that's the same thing that the fans here at Houston are expecting is when, when we're going to do well. And that's, that's the hope that are, that's the hope that I, we we are having to bring some joy to the Houston fans. All right. Last one before I let you go and thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it again. Congratulations, Paulo. Is, is there a need for a big name player here? Is there a need for that? And, and what's your feelings on that? Because that's one of the things the fan base goes directly to. They'd love to see a name player here, but what's your feelings on that? My feeling is that we have to structure the club before we add a big name, right? We have to instill that culture, instill that core of group of players first before we add that big, big name into the to Houston Dynamo, right? Because when you bring that big name, uh, we cannot have that impact or destroy what we have built in the locker room. So I think there is place, but there are steps prior to that that needs to be done. 
Paulo, fantastic interview. Want to wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much for coming on the program. I very much appreciate it. And uh, we're pulling for you to help uh, turn this thing around. Thank you, Glenn. Always a pleasure. All right. That's Dynamo head coach, Paulo Nagamura.